So inverse trig ratios, which means we can use or find the angle measure now versus the side length. Inverse implies that we're going to find the angle measure. So in this case, if I wanted to find angle theta here, um, I'm going to go ahead and use inverse sine, cosine, or tangent. So in this case, our theta is going to be equal to, and if we think about this, this is still our hypotenuse. That's the opposite and adjacent. So theta could be either your sine, and in this case, to the negative first power, which means inverse of your opposite over hypotenuse. Just like Soka Toa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Also, we could do cosine inverse. So theta is also equal to your cosine inverse of adjacent over hypotenuse. And lastly, your tangent inverse is your opposite over adjacent here. So we could find the theta of three different ways using your opposite adjacent or hypotenuse here. So finding the missing angle measure. So it says find the measure of angle A round to the nearest tenth if necessary. So we need to find this angle right here. So we're standing in this position. Um, in this case, we're given this is the opposite hypotenuse and adjacent. Since we have all three of these, we could use any ratio. So I'm just going to choose sine because I want to do sine. So the measure of your angle A is going to be equal to your sine inverse of your opposite of 9 over your hypotenuse of 17. Now on your calculator, you just press second and then sine, which is sine inverse, and then type 9 divided by 17, and then press enter. So when you do that, we can round that angle. The measure of angle A is approximately 32 degrees rounded to the nearest tenth. So that would be my answer. You could also check that if you wanted to do that again, measure of angle A. You could say, let's do the cosine inverse. So cosine is going to be your adjacent of 14.4 all over your hypotenuse, which if you do do that, it's going to be 32 degrees as well. And like I said, you could use tangent as well, so you can use any three of those ratios if we have all three of those numbers given. So another example, but we're finding measure of angle B here. In this case, it's actually the same picture as the slide before. We're just going to look for angle B here. So in this case, if we're standing in that perspective, let's go ahead and find it um, using tangent this time. So the measure of angle B is equal to your tangent inverse. And from that angle, we know that this is your opposite, this is your adjacent, and this is your hypotenuse. We need opposite over adjacent, so we're going to put in 14.4 over your adjacent of 9 here. And we're going to simplify that. So if we do that, the measure of angle B is equal to, well, we're going to approximate it because we're going to round to the nearest tenth and it's approximately 58 degrees. Now the nice thing is we should understand that it is 58 degrees because before we found that this is 32 degrees and if we know this is a triangle and a right triangle that these all have to add up to 180 degrees. So both of these are complementary so they both add up to 90 because this is the other 90 because 90 plus 90 is 180. Um, we could have just said 90 minus 32, which is 58 degrees, to get this really easily or fast. Or you could do this, which is also easy as well. But to double check yourself, just make sure they both add up to 90 degrees. So using angles of elevation and depression. In golf, a golfer is standing at a tee looking up. So looking up here is called an angle of elevation. So he's kind of looking up there, so it's going upwards. This would be my angle of elevation right there. Um, the T is 36 yards lower than the green and the angle of elevation from the T to the hole is 12 degrees. So this is 36, degree, or 36 yards, this is 12 degrees. Now from the camera in a blimp, the apparent distance between the golfer and the hole is the horizontal distance. Find the horizontal distance. So how far is this distance here? So we're going to put an X here. So now all we have to do is use that information to decide what we know. So we have this angle, we're starting here, we have adjacent, we have opposite, which is tangent here. So let's go ahead and we're going to use tangent of that 12 degrees is your opposite of 36 yards all over that x here. 
So in this case, we multiply x to both sides and then divide by tangent of 12 degrees. So when you simplify this, this is just x is equal to 36 yards, all divided by that tangent of 12 degrees, which make sure your calculator is in degrees. And when we go ahead and simplify that, um, x is approximately 169.4 yards in length. So now using angles of depression here, a hill of a roller coaster has an angle of descent. Angle of descent here is an angle of depression, or an angle of depression as it says, of 60 degrees. So this is the angle of depression. So if it's going straight out and it's looking downwards, that's 60 degrees. Its vertical drop, so straight down vertically, is 195 feet. From a blimp, the apparent distance traveled by the roller coaster is the horizontal distance from the top of the hill to the bottom. Find the horizontal distance. So we're trying to find this x here, the horizontal distance from here to here, using sine, cosine, or tangent. So in this case, we know that this is opposite, this is adjacent, so we're using tangent here. So the tangent of that 60 degrees is your opposite of 95 feet all over your adjacent of x, which simplifying it, x is equal to that 95 feet all divided by the tangent of 60 degrees. Remember, you multiply x over and then you're going to divide by that tangent of 60. I did it in one step. And then when we simplify this, x is about 112.6 feet in length.